Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the AAA's uh, online briefing series. And today we have the uh, Global Tech uh, series brought to us by uh, Austrade, and uh, delighted to have you here today as as well. Uh, we have a very esteemed group of speakers that you'll hear from today, and we're very absolutely delighted to uh, be able to uh, uh, to present this for you. And it'll be a monthly occurrence, and uh, and so we'll be dealing with a, a, a different uh, economy each each session. Uh, my job today is really to just uh, make sure that housekeeping has been addressed, so that uh, uh, you get a great experience, and then I'll hand over. Uh, I would like to acknowledge all the um, uh, custodians of all the lands we, uh, the regional custodians of all the lands we meet on today, and pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging. Uh, to uh, have a great experience today, given the number of uh, the speakers we have, you uh, as a, as participants will have the opportunity to provide questions through the Q and A uh, area. So please use that for your questions this afternoon. Uh, there'll also be a Slido opportunity as well. So watch for the uh, the uh, the, uh, the messages coming up there as well. Uh, other than that, I'm going to hand over to uh, David Camalingo from Austrade to uh, now host proceedings, and uh, and I look forward to uh, you having a fantastic experience this afternoon, David. Over to you. Thank you, Ron. Uh, thanks everybody for joining this session. Um, I, I probably just want to pro provide a little bit of background as to the, you know where this came about. Um, we so Austrade has been doing quite a bit of work in the tech sector, working with a number of Australian tech companies and tech clients, and obviously foreign uh, tech companies on their engagement here in Australia. Um, and we work with them across a variety of different markets. Um, however, what we're hoping to do through this series is really start to shine a light on some of those markets that are probably a little bit less familiar to Australian tech companies than, than others. Um, so we're quite pleased to be able to partner with AIIA on, on this particular series, starting here today with, um, with Vietnam. Um, I'd, uh, I just also wanna mention that this is a series. So this is the first in a series of 10 webinars that will go over the course of the year. So for the next uh, 10 months, um, starting today, we'll be delivering a, a session like similar to this on different markets, um, highlighting a different market. And uh, and it's really not just about the webinar and today and the attendees today, but it's actually about starting to develop some content that we can then start to share through our various channels. So this webinar will be recorded, it will be hosted online, 
um, some of the insights and the presentations can be shared uh, and can be really used over the course of a year and ongoing for uh, Australian tech companies to be able to access and understand the opportunities for them in those markets. So I'll leave it at that. Um, big thanks to uh, AIA for their support. Um, and also just want to say happy International Women's Day uh, also. Um, we've got some incredibly uh, uh, talented um, women participants that are actually on this call and uh, as part of our team and look forward to, to hearing them and playing our role in kind of supporting them going forward. Um, I, with that, I'm going to hand over to our Austrade Trade Commissioner, who's based in Vietnam out of Hanoi, um, Shannon Lee, to provide some opening remarks. Shannon, over to you. Thank you, David, and uh, thanks very much to Ron uh, and the AIAA uh, for bringing us all together uh, today for this session. Um, we're pleased to work with you, um, and we're, we're also pleased to, to support and be part of a broader team uh, assisting Australia's tech industry uh, in, in their market entry efforts into Vietnam. Uh, as David mentioned, I'm Shannon Lay, Australia's Trade Commissioner to Vietnam, based in Hanoi. Uh, and we have a fantastic lineup of speakers uh, and panelists here today. So we hope you enjoy today's presentation, but most importantly, uh, we hope you learn a lot about the Vietnam market. Um, as we're joined by our expert uh, presenters and panelists, I'll keep my comments uh, brief uh, on the market. But just to say uh, before we go to the panel that Vietnam most certainly should be on your radar as a market of interest, uh, particularly if you're looking for uh, growth and growth within the ASEAN region. Um, in the work that Nyung and I do on a daily basis, um, we see um, the effects of digitalization within the economy and the trends towards it. Uh, and there's a unique nexus here uh, between government, uh, industry and consumers all heading in the one direction, uh, a positive direction towards liberalization when it comes to tech. Um, so we certainly encourage you uh, to look at the market more deeply following this session. On that note, I'm delighted to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Uh, Khan Van Luk. Uh, Dr. Luk is a Chief Economist of the Bank for Investment and Development of Vietnam, BIDV, uh, and is President of BIDV's Training and Research Institute. He's also a member of Vietnam's Fiscal and Monetary Policy Advisory Council. Dr. Luc is Vietnam's preeminent thought leader in, econ in economics, banking and finance, uh, and we're incredibly fortunate to have his insights today. Dr. Luc will open our session today with an overview of Vietnam's economy and digital trends. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Luc. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Shane. Thank you all for inviting me to speak today. Okay, can you uh, allow me to share my screen, please? Okay, so um, thank you again, uh, um, Astrid and uh, AIIA for inviting me to talk today. Um, so you see, within 10 minutes, I will uh, give you two pictures. The first picture is about Vietnam's economy in the past, uh, let's say, five years and the next five years. The second picture will be about digital transformation of Vietnam, also, you know, in the past five years and the plan for the coming future. And of course, I will also give you some kind of, uh, so what should be the opportunities and challenges uh, facing uh, Vietnam digital transformation and, of course, some uh, implication for the foreign investors. Okay, so, uh, you know, regarding uh, the first picture about Vietnam's economy, maybe, you know, um, you may be surprised that we have been reforming our economy in the past 35 years and uh, Fortunately, in Italy, you know, no crisis, okay? No recession, very well performing. Uh, GDP growth in the past 35 years has been about 6.2%, okay? But uh, in the past, uh, you know, two years, given the COVID-19, in 2020, we grew at about 2.9%, and last year, 2.6%, uh, but we are hoping to recover very quickly this year with the growth rate of about 6.5%.
uh, you know, in that context, Vietnam's uh, income per capita also has been increasing uh, very rapidly. Okay, we were one of the uh, one of the very poor economies in 1990, but uh, now this is GDP uh, per capita of the uh, country. I uh, know uh, uh, is about more than uh, four thousand US dollars. That's the current price with our adjusted GDP. Uh, you know, in the past, uh, let's say, uh, five years, uh, Vietnam's economy has been doing quite okay, as I talked to you briefly some time ago. Um, for example, uh, you know, um, before the COVID-19, it was growing at about 6% per annum, and uh, inflation about 3%, okay? Uh, last year, of course, you know, was uh, not a very good year for uh, the global economy in general and also for Vietnam in particular. So, uh, for this year, we are hoping that we would recover more quickly and grow at more than 6%. But inflation is uh, going up, of course, globally and also in Vietnam. It will be roughly about 4% this year. Okay, um, we also uh, um, have got very good uh, key drivers for our economic growth. Number one is strong performance in export. Number two, investment, including domestic and also FDI investment. Okay, and number three, we also have a try to maintain quite stable exchange rate and also lower, uh, lowering the rate of interest to support uh, businesses and uh, households. Uh, you know, here is our key uh, trading partners last year. Okay, you could see that US, China, Japan, Korea, Sun. Uh, Australia see, has been in the top 50, okay, in, in trading uh, partnership with Vietnam, accounting for about, let's say, 2% of our total import value and 1% of our total export value. So, Meaning what? We can do much more, okay? We are aiming to have a, let's say, $15 trade value between the two economies by 2025 and maybe even higher. Investment uh, in Vietnam has been, uh, uh, you know, quite um, good, quite well performing. Every year we have uh, the FDI grow about, more, about 7 to 10% except for the past two years, it has been slowed down, but very stable. Anyway, see, we still are not uh, get uh, much benefit from the investment shift from China and other economies, but we hope that in the coming future with you know, various factors, especially the very stable um, politics environment and also improve investment climate, Vietnam should be a better destination for attracting more FDI in the coming future. How about the top FDI investors into Vietnam? Okay, you may see Korea, Singapore, Japan, Taiwan, um, Hong Kong, and China too. Australia see, uh, you know, has been again in the top uh, 15 with about, uh, you see, with about $2 billion, all right, and more than 500 uh, projects investment into Vietnam so far. Again, we can do much more a lot of room for uh, FDI from Australia here. Okay, and you see, uh, how about our plan for the coming future? Uh, Vietnam actually has made a very clear plan about, you know, uh, economic growth uh, in the next uh, five years and also 10 years, six to 7% growth. And we try to become uh, an upper middle income economy by uh, 2030. You may look at the uh, digital economy um, plan of Vietnam too. So we are trying to have a digital economy uh, accounting for about 20% of GDP by 2025 and 30% you know, by 2030. Okay, now the second uh, picture about digital transformation of Vietnam. Okay, um, I will... Uh, uh, go quite fast over here. So, see, first one, we need to uh, to come to some kind of agreement on what should be, um, you know, digital economy. 
by definition. So in Vietnam now, you see, we are trying to look at the so-called narrow definition, which uh, digital economy should include the ICT sector and, uh, you know, IGT, ICT and digital platform based products and services. Okay, in the future, with our, you know, better stats, and then we can, uh, we can look at the broad meaning of uh, digital economy. Okay, so in the past you know, six years, Vietnam has been, um, I think, going quite fast in uh, terms of legal framework improvement. A lot of, you know, guidelines, direction from the party, from the government, and also different strategies. But uh, I would like to draw your attention, you know, to the decision by the Prime Minister um, okay, uh, two years, uh, three years ago, uh, sorry, two years ago, uh, so the decision uh, 749, okay, setting some kind of guideline and orientation for Vietnam in uh, developing digital economy by uh, 2030, with uh, eight uh, priority sectors, uh, given some kind of priority for going faster in terms of digitalization. Okay, and uh, this year Vietnam will be issuing the updated digital economy strategy. Uh, hope, uh, I hope it will be coming very soon. Okay, also, you know, digital infrastructure development also doing quite okay. Okay, we have a launch of 5G and we rank number two and three, you know, uh, among ASEAN economies in terms of, you know, internet uh, penetration, uh, mobile penetration and uh, and of course, innovation of Vietnam also has been improving uh, quite uh, well. All right, this is the Global Innovation Index ranking uh, last year. We were ranking number 44 out of 141 economies in the sample. We are similar to Thailand in this aspect. Okay, this is the workforce and skills also has been improving. We have got the so-called Human Capital Index you know, ranking number 48. And of course, uh, we also have been trying to improve the global digital readiness. Okay, we are ranking number four in ASEAN and trying to be number three or number two in the coming future. All right, this is, you know, digital readiness index, as I just talked to you. Um, of course, we also have got, you know, other sectors uh, which are booming, e-commerce, all right, uh, doing very well in Vietnam. And uh, also, we see digital as the internet economy of Vietnam also has been growing very fast, around fourteen billion dollars uh, two years ago. And uh, the Ben and Company uh, study uh, hopes that Vietnam would be growing at the bell twenty nine percent. Okay, the highest, you know, the highest growth rate among ASEAN member states in the next five years. Okay, and um, next, I would like to talk to you about the plan for Vietnam's digital transformation in the next five years and also 10 years. So this is you know, the uh, plan, uh, uh, you know, uh, signed by the PM uh, two years ago. So we are trying to have uh, the digital economy uh, accounting for about 25% of GDP by 2025 and 30% uh, by, by uh, 2030, okay? And also trying to be top uh, 30 countries in various indices. Okay, uh, so, uh, you know, based upon that scenario, we have uh, run uh, three uh, scenarios for Vietnam uh, digital transformation uh, by 2030. Okay, so uh, let me show you the summary over here. Okay, so we have uh, designed three uh, scenarios and we are trying to go for the second scenario. Okay, whereby if we can mm, do a good job in digital transformation and then, you know, and then the contribution of the digital economy to GDP growth, you know, could be about 0.63 to 0.85 uh, uh, percentage point per annum. Okay, per annum from now until uh, 2030. 
Okay, anyway, we are, are facing, you know, six main challenges. Number one should be awareness, of course, you no know, resistance to change also has been the case for many developing economies. Institutions, especially the legal framework, you know, seem to be a little bit behind, so we need to be catching up. Okay, and then digital infrastructure and digital skills for the uh, people and also even for the for the talent. Innovation ecosystem also need to improve. And of course, cybersecurity also one of the key concerns now and in the coming future. And that's why I see in our plan, uh, the Vietnamese government has uh, worked out six main solutions. Okay, legal framework need to be improved. And of course, more innovation ecosystem uh, enhancement, and then uh, training and research. Okay, and also more improvement for, you know, for cybersecurity. And of course, we also are setting up some national information cent uh, innovation centers, uh, which uh, have been, you know, uh, doing uh, okay initially. Of course, we also need to develop international cooperation, you know, in which Australia should be playing a very key role in uh, this part. Okay, finally, so what should be the implication for foreign investors? I think a lot, a lot. Okay, we, we should be uh, continue to achieve high growth economic uh, rate uh, and also rising uh, middle e class. And we have about 100 million people uh, size, market size. Okay, some uh, sectors which are very potential for growth, including financial, fintech, ICT, you know, health and uh, pharmaceutical, you know, infrastructure, retail, education, and including every business. Okay, um, and of course, we also have got, you know, some more opportunities in M&A, SOE, uh, divestment, and restructuring. Of course, uh, as I talked to you before, digital transformation has been a key priority, uh, you know, in many, many uh, our national uh, strategies agenda. Okay, and the way we still have got some challenges, as I talked to you before. So, in summary, I can say digital transformation in Vietnam has been uh, uh, going quite fast. It has posed, uh, you know, both opportunities and challenges. But I do think that there are more opportunities than challenges. Okay, having said that, I would like to stop my presentation here and uh, look forward to the Q&A session. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Luke. As always, we uh, appreciate uh, your generosity and your time and, and you've done a great deal from your insights, so thank you. Um, I would now like to pass to my colleague, um, Yung Chang, uh, who's Business Development Manager here in Hanoi. Uh, and is also our tech lead in Vietnam. Um, Nyung has experience in the tech sector previously to Austrade, uh, and through her extensive networks and industry knowledge has helped a number of Australian companies uh, enter the market here over the last few years. So um, we look forward to your presentation. Over to you, Nyung. Thank you very much, Shannon. And, and uh, as usual, it's a great, great, valuable time listening to you, Dr. Luke. Thank you for your insights. So um, what's next? Why Vietnam and why now? Um, with this section, I'm going to give you a few key takeaways about Vietnam. Market size, end users, potential customers that you can use right away in your business plan in 2022. Okay, so first of all, for market size, um, the data points that I'm using here is a revenue of a potential of the internet economy in Vietnam, which uh, in this case consists of five verticals, e-commerce, online transport and food delivery, online travel, online media, and digital financial services. Uh, this is a data point that Dr. Luke has talked about, but I think it's important to still re-emphasize because it is an, an indicator of the potential market size you are trying to target. Uh, you could see that Vietnam's digital economy is forecast to grow at the fastest rate in the region, at 40% per annum. And this rate of growth has been materialized in the last two consecutive years. 
And in particular, a strong growth is forecast in digital financial services, as evident in the graph on the right hand side. Next. Um, so if you look at the growth potential, I would say that it is tremendous because of the current low base of service penetration in Vietnam. Look at FinTech, for example, um, only 30% of the Vietnamese population now have a bank account. Credit card penetration is only 4%. E-commerce revenue, even with all its growth in the past few years, represents still only 5% of total retail sales. And finally, for total insurance penetration rate by gross written premium in Vietnam, it was 1.7% six years ago, now rising to uh, almost 4% of GDP. But still, this is very much lower than average uh, global and re regional data. So the question is, with this, all this growth uh, uh, potential, what will be driving this growth in the next few years? Next. Um, we believe there are two main drivers to this growth. Number one would be consumer digital readiness. And second is the increasing spending power uh, as evident by the Vietnam sustained economic growth that Dr. Luc has shown in one of his slides previously. Um, if you look at the number of internet users in Vietnam, you will see that it was only 44 million six years ago but it rose to almost 70 million just last year. And another uh, particular interesting fact about Vietnam is Gen Z population. And these are the uh, consumers who were born after 1997. And you know, they currently make up the majority of the users on, on our app on TikTok. Um, we expect that in the next few years, Gen Z will have a tremendous influence in the consumer market in Vietnam and also in the taking up of new technology in Vietnam. And uh, on the right-hand side, uh, this is a data that I, I pulled uh, to show you the increase in engagement of Vietnamese with mobile banking apps. And this is an indicator of the rise in engagement of Vietnam with smartphone apps in general. COVID has definitely caused challenges to Vietnam but at the same time, we believe that it is, has been a real a, a catalyst for digital services growth. Um, some, some recent interesting data points here is uh, Mac, um, uh, Mac, um, McKinsey conducted a survey last year, and it shows that 82% of Vietnamese no nowadays use digital banking at least once a month. And the recent data on uh, digital pay payment released by the Bank of Vietnam also show that there has been spectacular growth in both volume, volume and value of payment transactions in the last year alone. And e-commerce sales is expected to double every year in the next five, uh, five, uh, five years. So if you look at uh, bringing your solutions and service to Vietnam, this will be your end users who are using your service. So what about your potential customers? If you come to Vietnam, uh, one of your biggest questions uh, will, uh, will be, who are the customers that I could target? And what is their uh, openness towards taking up of new technology? I would say that in the last uh, five years, we have seen increasingly openness to, uh, of banks and companies in Vietnam to take up and test new uh, technologies. This graph, you will see that Vietnamese banks, for example, are still at the very beginning of developing their digital capabilities. But this is changing fast as banks and companies now are starting to modernize their own digital infrastructure and innovate on their front end products and services. Um, these are five areas of recent technology investment uh, for banks in Vietnam that I wanted to just show as an example. You will see that big data and artificial intelligence is uh, at early stage, but it's increasingly get attention from banks. And then we also have open banking, cloud computing, and blockchain being an emerging area, but we are, have been seeing increasing growth. Uh, 
Um, if you look at a few recent examples in Vietnam, um, on the left hand side, you will see a mobile app named Timo. Timo is the first digital only bank in Vietnam launched a few years ago. And um, it is um, an online bank that um, pro uh, pro um, provide a full suite of services, including banking account and credit card services. And it is targeting the young uh, population in Vietnam. And on the right hand side is an image of a live bank station in Vietnam that, that operates 24 7, 24 hours, seven days. If you want to open a bank account in Vietnam, you no longer have to visit a branch and meet a physical person. You could just visit such a sta station in Vietnam and could open a new bank account using your fingerprint. And you could also talk to a customer service officer on the phone. Okay, so if you were to build your business in Vietnam, will you have the right talent to implement your business plan? Um, I'm, I'm confident the answer is yes. And Vietnam is growing its tech talent. And with this, I refer to two pools of talent. Number one are the Vietnamese developers who are young, intelligent, and eager to learn. And second is an influx of Vietnamese who are educated overseas or having working experience overseas and are returning to Vietnam, bringing with them world-class business skills and global ambitions. And no surprise, in the last 12 months alone, Vietnam has seen three new unicorns. Axie Infinity is a blockchain-based digital gaming company. And VNPay and Mo, um, Mo, um, Momo are, two, um, are both two digital payments company. National Australian Bank recently set up its Tech Innovation Center in Vietnam, which is another sign of the growing human resource talent in Vietnam. Okay, last but not least is the regulatory environment in Vietnam. I will not go into too much detail here. Dr. Luc has talked about it. We, um, what is fortunate about Vietnam is that we enjoy a pretty uh, supportive regulator. The Vietnamese government is very proactive in leading the country towards faster progress in digital transformation. And you could see that uh, the government issued a national program um, a few years ago and different industries in Vietnam is following, are following suit with their own agenda. So all these uh, factors together point to a fertile, fertile ground in Vietnam for Australian tech companies to consider as a market for technology, digital services consumption. And now, uh, before I end the presentation, I will just go through quickly five areas of business opportunities for you to consider. Next. Um, the first opportunity lies in data analytics and database management. Um, data management and security is a top concern for many companies in Vietnam, and especially from a fintech perspective, it's banks. And local companies are still at the very early stage of exploring different technologies. So any solutions in data analytics and insights will be welcomed with strong enthusiasm in Vietnam. Risk and compliance, you could see that a natural trend of cybersecurity. In increasing digital transformation means um, um, in increasing external digital threat. And as a result, cybersecurity is an, 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 uh, another field that is uh, uh, um, attracting foreign companies. The competition is fierce. Um, you will see that in each slide, I put down a few companies that are already um, um, tackling the solutions in Vietnam. Front end products and services. Um, EKYC, buy now, pay later, a trend started in, in Australia with Afterpay now pouring over to Vietnam. Um, so most of the corporates in Vietnam are in a race to innovate with their front end products and services. So uh, solutions in different areas are welcomed. For example, in, in lending, financial inclusion and pay, uh, pay, payments. Um, cloud computing is a trend that we have seen growing strongly in Vietnam. Uh, two foreign companies recently um, have m and in Vietnam. Um, an example is Fog Machine from the UK and Mam Mam um, Mambu from Germany. So these are two of the examples of cloud computing infrastructure companies who recently um, 
uh, gain their foothold in the Vietnamese market. And finally, this is more of a fintech uh, lens. Um, we also see opportunities in insurtech, wealth management, and neo bank. Um, so I hope that um, this has given you a brief summary of the opportunities where they lie, and I look forward to continue to touch base with you after the webinar today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nyung. That was um, very comprehensive, and um, we're, we're really lucky to have Nyung uh, on our team and leading um, market entry efforts for, for the tech industry here in, in um, Vietnam. As mentioned in the opening, um, if Nyung and I can assist any companies looking to enter uh, Vietnam, we look forward to doing so um, and hearing from you. Um, before we move to our panel, I just wanted to remind uh, all guests today that uh, we do have Slido operating um, for questions. So uh, it's hashtag global tech, um, as you can just see there in the chat box. So um, feel free to enter your questions um, during the panel discussion and, and we'll get to them straight afterwards. So on that note, I'm, I'm pleased to be joined uh, by our panel. Uh, and today we're joined uh, by Martin Schlatter, Chief Operating Officer of Salt Group. Uh, Ms. Nguyen T. Tu Zhang, Vice Chairwoman and General Secretary of the Vietnam Software and ITC, IT Services of Vanasa, and Bin Pham, Managing Director, BCA Partners. Martin has been in the information technology industry for 25 years, and his experience includes roles in technical infrastructure security, product and business development, solution development, and executive business management. As COO, Martin is accountable for executing, executing the existing business strategy and formulating further strategic goals to support Salt Group's ambitions. Um, those ambitions are to, to become a, a truly global provider of high assurance identity, user and transaction authentication solutions. Prior to founding BCA Partners, um, Mr. Bin served as CEO at Vietnam International Securities. With over 16 years of combined experience in banking, finance and investment, Bin has extensive relationships in various sectors in Vietnam, including tech and fintech, banking and investment advisory, as well as relationships in the international markets. Ms. Sang Nguyen is the Vice Chairwoman of the Vietnam Software and IT Services, Vanessa. Vanessa is a national association in Vietnam, comprising more than 270 members, most of whom are leading software firms operating nationwide. So thank you very much to our panelists for joining today. I think we'll kick off uh, with you, Martin, if you don't mind. Um, we'd be very interested to hear uh, about Salt Group's experience in Vietnam um, and also your professional experience in working across Asia and, and in Vietnam itself. Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me, Shannon. Our, our experience in Asia started back in 2010 with a single customer in Vietnam. And uh, I'm delighted to say it's still a customer of ours today. So it's, so it's 12 years on and still going strong. And I think it's fair to say it's developed into, into more than a typical supplier customer relationship. It's very much a collaboration and a partnership. And I think that's the, that's the kind of relationships we want to build at Salt Group. Um, it, it's probably indicative of the type of business we have. We're not a, we're not a highly transactional business. We, we don't sell specifically to the mass market, all our solutions are very much used by, you know, mass market consumers like our mobile authentication software, which is used by thousands and thousands of retail banking customers worldwide. But, you know, we serve the organizations that, that provide services to these mass markets. And so, you know, our, our, our intent is to get a really deep understanding of the business that our customers have of the challenges that they face and, and then build solutions for them that help them address that market space and stay competitive. So, so you know, for us operating in the Asia Pacific market, it's encouraging to see that customers there want that kind of interaction. They want that level of engagement from a supplier to, to get to the point where you understand their business. And, and we also learn a lot from customers in the Asia Pacific market. We, we take a lot of input from their requirements um, and there's a lot of joint innovation that happens. So, you know, if something truly innovative gets taken up in a market um, as dynamic as, as Vietnam and Asia Pac is, you know, then it's something that we can turn into the into the product portfolio that we that we provide into the greater market space. So that, that's a really it's a really good advantage of working uh, in the Asia Pacific market where it's so dynamic. Prior to Salt Group, I ran um, the information security business for a large systems integrator. Um, across APAC, slightly different in terms of 
of its approach, a little bit more transactional in terms of the products that it sold. But I think the experience and the learnings were, were equal on, on in both different approaches. I think the, you know, my learning from dealing in Asia Pacific, it's very much a trust-based environment. Um, the cornerstone to longevity in the market there is building trust with your customers. And that's, that's both in terms of doing what you say you're gonna do, which, which I think is, is mandatory, but also being there when things don't go well and when, um, when it's tough um, and, and when there are challenges, I think your ability to support from wherever you are is key. So I, I think that's um, it's one of the, the, the big tenets for me in terms of operating in that market is, is you need to be there when the support's required and when there are issues, um, and, and that's, when you, that's when you really earn your money. Um, Vietnam's it's vibrant, it's fast-paced, it's highly competitive. Um, there are large consumer segments. Uh, consumers are not averse to change. Um, if there is not value, they'll move on and they'll go somewhere else. So I think operating in that market, you need to be innovative and adaptive continuously, and you need to make decisions quickly. So I think being competitive in, in the asia Pac market means having a competitive offering. Um, but also changing and, and, and adapting as, as the market changes. Terrific, Martin. Thank you. And I, I think your point is, is well made on uh, building trust and the fact that Salt Group's been here for, for over a decade. Um, you know, when we speak to exporters, the most important thing, I, I think, here is building trust, um, longevity, and, and also understanding and, and investing the time in your business partners. So uh, it's a point well made. And I should say also that we, we're pleased to work with Salt Group. So it's an example of where Austrade can also um, work with and assist companies um, both in market entry, but after market entry as well. Um, so thanks very much, Martin, for your insights. Ben, um, if you don't mind, we'll, we'll ask you to share your experience working with uh, foreign tech companies on their market entry in, in Vietnam. Yeah, okay, sure. So thank you for your question. Actually, like the tech industry is very big industry uh, with many sectors. So with my background in uh, strategy and uh, uh, M&A, merger and acquisition, so I have been company and investor to enter into Vietnam. I, I would like to share my own experience working with some of the company within the space, especially those from uh, Southeast Asia, China and India, right? So most of the company uh, that I work with in the past, right, they, they're very excited about the potential market in Vietnam. Everyone already talked about uh, how attractive the market, uh, Mr. Luke uh, uh, Nhung as well, right? <clears throat> And uh, the company that I work with in very various sector in the tech industry, like the learning management system, um, the KPI software management, uh, cyber security, uh, tech fin platform operator for fintech company. So very, very diverse company. However, in, in order to, to enter the market and be successful, it's a very different story. So common issue that I, I observe from the company that I work with is like, when they see the, the market potential, but then they didn't dedicate like enough uh, resource for the expansion strategy. It's just like uh, you go and touch the water and see what's going on and then go back and think, but we don't move very aggressively into the market, right? And the second thing is like uh, when they approach the Vietnam market with a very different uh, system of law and regulation, especially for those specific sector and new sector like uh, tech and fintech in Vietnam, where we still establish the sandbox, everything is very new. So we need to compete with all those local companies. So that's something like the gray area that uh, foreign company, they, 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 they hesitated and they don't move very aggressively. Uh, sometimes during, uh, due to like language barrier as well, you need to read a lot of like local uh, degree or uh, similar thing. And uh, thirdly would be the local market insight. Everything is very different from market to market. Like I work with a company that provides system for logistic management uh, in Vietnam, right? They are very big provider like uh, in the world, but then when they come to Vietnam, it's totally different how the, the local distribution uh, uh, logistic company manage their driver, manage their warehouse. So they need to change everything like on the procedure. And uh, uh, finally, 
the very different working culture and approach to business like in Vietnam, everything uh, mostly based on relationship. So if you are so straightforward, like the, the way we work with uh, like Western company, uh, because we have the, the, the luck that we study overseas and working for foreign companies. So somehow we, we, we know that the, 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 the huge difference in here. So that's how like foreign company, especially tech company come to Vietnam. They have some difficulty uh, like uh, assess the market and be successful here. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Boone. Very helpful insights, um, and we appreciate it. I'll, I'll now go to Ms. Zhang. Um, Zhang, can you tell us about uh, Vanasa uh, and the collaboration to date that you've had um, with foreign companies? Yeah, thank you very much for the question. So, um, yeah, as you may know, that Vanasa is a Vietnam Software and IT Services Association. And in Vietnam, we are the only national association which have uh, uh, corporate members which is working on um, yeah, uh, software, uh, IT services, uh, digital content, and digital transformation. Uh, at the moment, now we have around 500, 505 uh, member companies uh, as number in December 2021. And uh, our member companies are almost, almost the, the biggest uh, IT uh, corporations in Vietnam are our members, and uh, of course, uh, ninety percent of our members are small and medium companies. And um, <clears throat> um, at the moment, now our member company takes about uh, seventy percent of IT uh, revenue uh, of the industry, and we also represent about seventy percent of the the human resource. Um, so for Vinasa. Uh, yeah, as you may also have information from Mr. Herluck's presentation, in Vietnam now, uh, yeah, there are some um, changing and, and movement uh, and uh, digital content, um, smart city, uh, new technologies are uh, the areas that um, uh, you have a huge opportunities. So uh, as uh, an association uh, with the role of uh, connecting the business together, uh, we we organize a lot of activities and um, um, yeah we focus on on uh, digital transformation. We, we focus on all the new tech uh, with the high tech uh, with the 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 um, AI uh, blockchain uh, metaverse and now uh, now uh, the the metaverse and web uh, three point zero um, and. Um, yeah, we uh, every year we uh, we have uh, quite a number of activities uh, to support, uh, to connect or facilitate all the meetings between uh, Vietnamese company and now uh, yeah uh, foreign companies who come to Vietnam and looking for partners. Um, we have several uh, programs. Uh, so besides all the conference or. Um, um, yeah, um, business matching or exhibition. We also have uh, the uh, virtual business mission uh, overseas. And uh, this June, we will organize uh, uh, one uh, in cooperation uh, with AWA uh, on uh, yeah, business cooperation in IT field uh, uh, between Vietnamese company and Australia company. Um, yeah, every year we also receive a lot of uh, requests from uh, uh, foreign companies. Uh, to uh, looking for uh, corporate uh, um, partner in Vietnam. So we also choose a uh, top 10 IT companies uh, in ICT uh, in 15 areas uh, to uh, recommend uh, or to introduce and connect uh, to uh, the company who have a request on cooperation uh, Vietnam with Vietnamese companies. So uh, yeah, in short, can say that we are uh, very much like a bridge uh, well, to connect, um, yeah, the foreign or especially the yeah request from all the countries uh, to have corporate in cooperation with Vietnamese company in IT field. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Sang. 
Uh, and obviously through Austrade, uh, you and myself, we can connect companies through to you, Ms. Zhang. But um, if you have a website or, or any other way that uh, companies can contact you direct, because I'm sure there'd be many who would be interested in the, the events that you yeah, spoke sure, of. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah, please feel free to put it in the chat box. But um, yeah. really appreciate your insights. Thank you. Um, Martin, just going back to you, could you tell us a bit more about um, Salt Group's technology, products, innovation and solutions and your plan in Vietnam? I think it would help um, those on the, the line understand the sort of companies that are succeeding here. Yeah, sure. So, so in short, we provide high assurance user authentication and, and digital transaction signing solutions to, predominantly to financial institutions, banks, um, and government. So, you know, just think of anywhere where a, a digital transaction needs to be verified and secured. Uh, land registration, securities exchanges, and, and the typical banking transactions, we've, we've got solutions in that space. We, we build our own back-end authentication platform, um, and that would then integrate with, with um, the business application of choice. Think of a core, core banking app. We do, we do the integration to those core banking applications. And we also build the front end user face. So, you know, whether it's an iOS or Android mobile authentication app that consumers would use um, to transact, we, we build that component. So we, you know, we manage the transaction from, from initiation, I guess, through to execution um, on, on the back end infrastructure. We, we do this for governments and banks uh, in Australia, obviously, in the United Kingdom, Switzerland, Hong Kong, Indonesia, uh, Vietnam, of course. Um, so we've got a breadth of customers, and um, that's really our core and, and, and our focus for the technologies we have. In, in terms of expansion over the next three years, we'll, we'll continue to definitely to focus on the B2B payments market that's becoming increasingly more regulated, um, especially in Asia, and Vietnam's a great example, obviously, of the, of the government's banking strategy and the decisions they're releasing Around, around how to influence that banking strategy. So that's certainly a core focus for us in keeping pace with, with regulation in that space and, and how we build that into our platform. Um, and we're also in, in parallel with that focused very much on the cashless and cardless future. You know, that's, that's obviously coming thick and fast and, and the digital multi-factor authentication and verification component to that, which is gonna be which is going to be really critical. So that that sort of will will be our core focus, at least for innovation um, in the next couple of years. Terrific, thanks, Martin. We have one more question before we uh, head to our Q and A. So, um, Ben, I'd just be interested, um, Mr. Ben, in, in any key tips that you would offer um, Australian tech companies in uh, attempting to enter Vietnam. Okay, sure. So obviously, uh, for tech company when they enter into Vietnam, they have some certain disadvantage uh, compared to like uh, local companies. So firstly, like in terms of law and regulation, I believe that uh, even though Vietnam we have a set up a very clear law and regulation, but there's still some gray area in many local law. So, so, so I, I believe that that's the area that uh, the, the Vietnamese company have uh, like some kind of advantage uh, because of the low degree of uh, law enforcement in Vietnam. Right? So uh, my tip for like foreign tech company when you enter into the market, then make sure that you hire the right local law firm um, that you can work with so that make sure that everything is uh, in compliance. The second thing like uh, for the advantage of the foreign company when they work in Vietnam, the working culture, right? And uh, uh, that's how like uh, we based on a lot of relationships. So, so that's how if you can hire some local uh, uh, like agency can do some get us work for you. For example, like last time I work in, uh, in the banking industry, right? So my bank in Singapore, they try to, to apply for the local license 100% uh, uh, subsidiary in Vietnam and they try to do it themselves. Uh, then also another bank like UOB in Singapore, they, they hire local agency, uh, stay in Hanoi, working uh, like every day with the uh, State Bank of Vietnam. I mean, uh, like in touch with the local authority, central government very often, then, then things will move very fast, right? So that's another thing. And uh, uh, next will be like the, the human resource, like, uh, problem in Vietnam is like you are lack of skilled worker uh, with sufficient language skill and discipline, right? 
so uh, my 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 advice would be like uh, uh, take advantage of those like overseas Vietnamese students who they study overseas and then they come back to Vietnam. So they are mix up the, the working culture between foreign company and they know the local market and they have the local contact like the network. So that will have solve a lot of problem. I know that company like um, uh, Ninja Van, uh, uh, Grab, they, they, uh, or even Tech Campaign, right? They they they, they own uh, hire local Vietnamese Thailand. I mean, who study overseas or like Viet Q, we call them who can speak the language. Um, then, lastly, like also related the human resource, like in Vietnam, uh, the the biggest problem is to have like sufficient uh, source of manpower and human resource for the company when you set up your business here in Vietnam. So even though uh, the cost is lower compared to some other country, but then the productivity also will be lower as well. Uh, so the training will be very important. And like the young Vietnamese, they, they, they respect like learning opportunity, the uh, culture has changed a lot. So when foreign company come to Vietnam, you can provide those uh, opportunity like the international exposure, especially when we have the headquarter back in the mother country, right? So international exposure or mobility programs, some rotation um, uh, program so that let the employee come back to the headquarter like a few months uh, in a year, for example, for training. And that will help attract talent uh, a lot in the Vietnam market. So, um, of course, that uh, the, the local inside, the, the consumer behavior and those things that I, I mentioned before, right? we need to be very ready to change our product and services and to adapt to the local practice. Yeah. That, and, we're that, that, yeah. and your point on the service providers is, is very important. Um, so often when there are decree changes, often they come out in Vietnamese first and, and it's important um, that when you're navigating the market, you both have a good partner, but also the service providers that can help you um, through. We have three questions and only a couple of minutes left, so we'll try to get through them. I'll answer the, the last one very quickly, which is uh, what is the best way for Australian tech companies to find customers or identify or explore opportunities in Vietnam? Um, working with Austrade is, is a good way. Um, we help through market entry research. We help through customer introductions um, in market. We also have the Australian Chamber of Commerce in market uh, who have well-connected companies here um, who have succe succeeded in Vietnam and they would certainly be happy to assist and hear from you too. Uh, and Vanessa um, as well, industry associations here. Uh, now that planes are up, um, travel is up and, and happening very shortly in Vietnam as well, um, getting here to the market is probably the most important thing. Face-to-face um, -face, um, is always the most important way of building trust. So uh, for those who are able to make it to the market as well, um, please reach out to us. I think that also covers the, the resources question, which is um, around a better understanding of the market. Um, again, engaging us at Austrade and, and the industry associations and keeping up to date with virtual events. So I think the last question is, how are Australian technologies and capabilities perceived in Vietnam? And does Australia have an existing reputation or brand for tech in Vietnam? Um, so I might pass to you, Ben, if you don't mind to, to close off on that question around Australia's reputation in market. So actually, um, the, like for my business exposure, then uh, mostly until now, I'm in touch with uh, like those uh, technology companies from Southeast Asia, uh, India and US and China. Uh, quite limited company coming from Australia so far. Yeah. So even though uh, yeah, from Nung uh, presentation, right, then the, the the potential of the market is very very high, and we are very open to new technology, new product and services. So yeah, why not come in into Vietnam and explore the market? Absolutely, and this is part of our. Uh, efforts. We've run a number of um, promotional webinars just to raise the awareness of, of the opportunities here in Vietnam for Australian companies. So, um, yeah, appreciate your insights, Ben. O on that note, um, uh, as the final part of today's session, uh, I'd like to draw your attention uh, to the FinTech in Vietnam Capability Development Program, um, which is a program that Austria is developing in collaboration with AsiaLink Business uh, in March. Um, this program is a comprehensive online training program for Australian business leaders in the fintech sector 
who are exploring opportunities to learn more about Vietnam as a market. Um, the program is carefully curated through three modules um, and covers several fintech segments, including payment, uh, blockchain and insure tech. Um, it covers the culture of doing business in Vietnam and a step-by-step -step guide on how you can enter Vietnam as a fintech market. So um, we encourage you uh, to register for that. Um, the first module starts uh, on Thursday, 10th of March, um, so this Thursday. So those that are interested, encourage you to join through that link. Uh, I'd like to say a huge thank you to all our presenters today uh, and our panellists for, for sharing your insights. Um, we greatly appreciate them and, and I'm sure uh, all attendees uh, learnt a lot from you today, so thank you. Um, to everyone on the call, uh, please reach out to our team uh, if you want to follow up on any information presented here today. Uh, and Jung and I uh, and our panellists, uh, if you reach out, certainly look forward to seeing you in Vietnam. So thank you. I'll now pass back to David. Thank you, Shen. Thank you. Thanks, Shannon. I think I think technically that wraps it up. So appreciate everybody's uh, uh, time. Appreciate all of the panelists again, uh, and everybody involved in helping put this together. And keep an eye out for our next session, which is happening in about a month's time, um, which the focus will be on Singapore. So we're actually going to keep a Southeast Asia focus for the first part of this year, and then start to branch off into other parts of Asia, and then in other markets as well. So keep an eye out for Austrade Communications. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day wherever you are. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Shen. Vietnam is your first country, right? Thank you. <laughs> Vietnam the first. That's thanks right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thanks. Thank you guys. Thank you. See you all. Yeah, thank okay. you. See you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bình Nhung nha. Thank you. Bình Giang nha. Bình nha. Bye-bye nha. Cảm ơn anh. Dạ. Thank you. See you, see you later. Yeah. 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 Gặp mọi người sau. Thank you, Ron. Thank you for organizing this webinar. Maybe you just stay for one second. I just take a quick photo for all of us. Ah. Okay. Oh, lost David already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's done. Thank you for Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, Dr. Luke.